Hi, my name is Nick Caruso, and today I'm going to be going over how to integrate a custom DLL into NSI AutoStore. Now, there's a companion video to this video that goes into how to create a custom DLL, and that's a 30-minute training video. This should be a lot quicker, uh, assuming that you already have a DLL, and how would you integrate that in? Uh, let's go over a quick demonstration to talk about what we're doing here. I have a file here, and I'm going to use Auto Capture. Um, and when I use auto capture, I have some metadata, um, such as um, a number here. And um, perhaps this number corresponds to some nested subfolder within hundreds of thousands of folders. And you need to find that folder based upon this keyword. Um, this would be the root folder, look for it, and then place that file appropriately. And when I hit submit here, it's going to run through the AutoStore workflow and it should output it. I already know it's going to be output to this folder structure here, but this is a, a nested folder structure that's pretty deep. In this case, it's representing 7,000 folders. Um, but just in a few seconds, there you go. Um, it's gotten to where it needs, needs to go. Um, so if I had done this in VB script alone, it would have been four or five times slower. Uh, and you're leveraging a custom DLL, it's a lot faster. Now, this training is really to integrate into any DLL. It could be uh, another customer's DLL, another um, third-party application DLL, and so forth. Let's just go into that a little bit more detail from a, a prep. So in this case, you have uh, NSI AutoStore. It's a client server based application and it has a, um, one of its scripting capabilities is VB script. Uh, when you're using VB script, oftentimes you have a need to integrate with third party DLLs. Um, we, within NSI, we use uh, SharePoint DLLs. We use WriteFax DLLs and so forth. Um, so you, oftentimes you're going to want to call those DLLs from VB script to interface with those, um, backend systems. Now, before I go on any further, this is a pretty technical training video. Uh, I would give it about a 90% on a 100% uh, level of difficulty where 100% would be a full developer. So uh, you're gonna want to at least understand, be able to understand code, under, become, be proficient in VB script, um, and have some comfort level in writing C Sharp, at least if you're gonna be creating your own custom DLL. Um, topics we're gonna be covering are auto store, VB script, creating custom RRTs, um, and in the companion video, I go over creating a custom C Sharp project, creating a custom C Sharp DLL that's com visible, and calling a DL DLL from AutoStore. But moving forward, the rest of this training assumes that that DLL has already been created. So let's go ahead and open up AutoStore and look at the configuration that I just did. So um, I used Auto Capture to right click on a file, fill out some metadata fields. The, that metadata interfaced with VB Script that interfaced with a DLL. Uh, in this case, the DLL that I'm interfacing with is right here, DLL that we had created in the previous video. Found the applicable subfolder you should be sending it to, and then um, based on the subfolder found, routed it accordingly. So let's open up this, our workflow here. I have two fields here, the, the root folder and the search term, which were in the pop-ups of Auto Capture. And let's go into the script itself. So a couple things on the script. I have my script file here. I'm passing in under my fields tab. I, I created two variables called root folder and search term, which I had mapped my auto capture fields into. So these are two um, inbound um, variables. All right, let's go ahead and open up the script. All right, so when you create a new script from scratch in auto store, you get two um, hooks, a search folders on load and a search folders on unload and I'm gonna go into um, what I did in there. But um, before I do that, my inbound uh, fields are that root folder and my search term, which I had mapped previously. And I'm gonna output two RRTs. One's gonna be the total results of my search and the other one's going to be um, a one, two, three, and four for subsequent searches. Um, all right, so before I go into the actual auto store, code, I have created two test functions down here, which I can call from within AutoStore to show you what's really happening. So the first one is, um, if I uncomment this out and I hit compile, what it's doing is it's searching for a subfolder with 5551212 in the file name in the, or in the folder name. Um, and based upon that result, it, it uh, in that case, there were two results found. So that was using the file system object. And if I use uh, a DLL I created and I run the same test, uh, you can see it's much faster. It's four times faster. In this case, it responded within one second. All right, so this um, call here, calling this test DLL, all it's doing is it's calling this um, 
custom function I had written called recurse folder DLL, which means search um, using the DLL, and I pass in the folder name and the um, search term. So if I open up this recurse DL DLL, this is calling my DLL. Now this is um, going to the previous video um, I had just done, but this is a com visible DLL and I'm calling a function in that DLL called search directory. I'm passing in my root path, my search string, and by reference on a string that should have a star delimited list of results. I'm checking if there were any errors. This will return back empty if there were no errors. So if this is empty, I split my string based upon the star, because this is a star delimited list. The reason I chose a star, by the way, is because stars cannot be, or an asterisk cannot be a valid folder name. So I know that um, I won't get any errors trying to use another delimiter. All right, so all I'm doing is I'm splitting this results array and I'm passing back an array to whoever called me. And then I'm passing back, based upon the function itself, any error. All right, so this is what this that function does. So two parameters to pass in, a result array to come back out. The function returns with a error message um, if there is any error. All right, so um, let's go into the heart of the Autostore config now. So search folders on load. I'm going to output to the status monitor what the root folder the user entered, what was their search term. I'm then initializing some variables. I'm declaring a start time um, just to track that. This next block of code, this is standard to any Autostore script, so I'm just getting a handle to my first document, the topic, which contains all the RT information, variable information. Um, this should always exist. If it doesn't, I'm going to error out to the status monitor and to, the op and to my workflow that there's an error, so it will stop uh, further progress in my workflow. So then this leaves this right here for the rest of uh, the heart of the operation. Again, just outputting to the status monitor. I'm calling my DLL here. I'm passing in my folder, my search term, and my results array, which was declared up here. So coming out of this, outputting to the status monitor, it's going to output what the total number of results were found. I'm incrementing by one because this, this is a zero-based array. And I'm showing how, many, how much time it took to process. Uh, one second, four seconds, whatever. All right, so... If I have, uh, if my return from here is zero, it means there was no errors. If if that does contain a value or a string in it, which means that it will be greater than zero, um, I will output the, what the error message was, and I'll fail the workflow. All right, so now we're just down to these six lines of code. So the first thing is I'm just going to output my total results, and then I'm going to say I'm creating a total result field or RT, which is what I did. I then loop through all of my results from zero to the end of my array. And I'm simply just outputting my array value into this new RRT that I'm creating up here. And that's it. So let's run it again. Let's compile it, make sure there's no errors. And this time I'm going to open up Status Monitor so you can see it in operation. I'm going to right click on here, Send to, Search and File, and Submit. So we should see it pop in here within a few seconds. And here it is. See, it's searching under 5551212. It took about two seconds to process. Two results were found. Those were both the fields that were the resulting fields. You can see here, um, comma one was my first result, and I'm using that to output to my folder. Thanks a lot for watching. I hope this video has been helpful. Please take the time to like or comment on this video. Additionally, you can watch more videos at videos.smartmfp.net or my own YouTube channel at user slash Nick Caruso biz. Or if you have technical questions, you can post them at forums.notablesolutions.com. Thank you.